Welcome back. Another episode of Chasing Latitudes with your host, myself, Christopher Cousteau. Now, this is episode two on what sailboat should you actually buy and how in the heck do you go about narrowing it down? In yesterday's episode, we covered your livable space on board and how to actually compare that from vessel to vessel as all sailboats, even though they might be the same length overall, are nowhere near the same as far as your livable space on board. So we covered that via going over your beam, your length of the waterline, as well as your length overall. And today we're going to talk about your entertainment space. That's right, ladies and gents, it's party time. We're covering your outdoor space on a sailboat and why it's not only important for entertaining, but also helming. So, you're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. So we're back. Today, we're taking a look at the exterior of our sailboat. We're trying to see, okay, hey, how many people can I have over on my boat and throw a shin dig this evening? Maybe you're one of those social people. I'm not but maybe you are. And in reality, the entertainment capabilities of your sailboat are not nearly as important when it comes to the exterior as several other factors. And we're gonna go over all of those today. There's a whole bunch to cover. Let's get started. Now, first up, here we are. We're walking to our new fancy dancy used sailboat. Oh, check it out, babe. Things are amazing. Whoops, bought myself a canoe stern. Don't mind the ladder. Let's just nimbly hop right up this thing. You know what I just did like two months ago? I was in uh, Antigua, St. Lucia. I was somewhere on a delivery, did that exact same step, missed the darn dock, slipped through between, tore my darn MCL, haven't been able to walk right since. So first up, we need to look at our ease of access onto and off of a sailboat, not only on the dock, but also at sea. Now, we're gonna plop right on over to Yacht World, take a look at a few vessels. Now, first up, we have a Pacific Seacraft 34. I'm simply using this as an example. Now, if we click on this, this is what's considered a canoe stern. As you can see, the back of the vessel comes to a pretty sharp point, creating what resembles a canoe. Now, the issue with these boats, first of all, it's a horribly, horribly outdated design overall. Now, if you see this boat right here at the dock, as we scroll through some of these photos, maybe we can get more than one exterior. Now, your access onto and off of this boat is an absolute nightmare. That's simply just because of the whole design. I'm not saying the boat itself is bad. However, this whole design is incredibly inefficient and not user friendly. Now, if you're in the water, so you're one of those people that wants to go, you want to anchor out all of those great things, you getting on and off of this boat on the water is next to impossible. You've got bobbin seas out there. You're in a dinghy. You're trying to grab onto a ladder and somehow do a gymnastic feat up and over onto this boat because you're anchored out for the evening. It is horrible now if you're trying to save money you're going to be anchored out you're going to be out there you're going to be going back and forth to shore on your dinghy you're going to be grabbing provisions you're going to be looking to try to make your life as comfortable as possible and that involves going back and forth to shore and this is going to create a giant hurdle in the process canoe stern i would never ever ever recommend a canoe stern you're simply going to hurt yourself not only the fact that it's a canoe stern, your access into and out of the boat at the dock and on the water is next to impossible. You have zero room here in your cockpit and your cockpit is where you're going to spend most of your time. We're going to go into that in just a little bit. So first up, canoe stern for multiple reasons. Horrible idea. Don't ever, ever buy yourself a canoe stern. So here we are, we're back over on the wonderful world of yachts, my least favorite website, but it's a necessary evil when it comes to buying a used sailboat. Now, our next type of stern on a vessel to be looking at, if it ever loads, 
There we go. <laughs> All right. So this is a racing boat. It's the Beneteau First. That's their racing series. However, this type of flat stern is very, very common on a lot of 90s and early 2000s boats. Now, with this type of a stern, you're going to run into the exact same issue. Your access onto and off of the boat from the water is an absolute pain in the rumple stiltskin, as well as from the dock. Now, there's a lot of different boats we can cover here. So we've kind of got our canoe stern, our flat back boats. Those are a pain in the butt. I would never, ever recommend buying either of those. Now, our next option from there is this vessel right here, or this style, I should say. This is called a sugar scoop right here with a walk-through transom. So you can see this is your transom, the stern of the vessel. You can walk right through the transom, and you have a sugar scoop. Now, this allows you a bit more ease of access onto and off of the boat, not only at the water, but also at the dock. You can back these boats right in. You can step right off the dock, directly onto the boat, walk right through your transom. So if you've got groceries, provisions, doing laundry, whatever it is you're doing out there, living your best life, this is much, much better than a canoe stern or a flatback stern. Hands down. Now this guy, let's get some more photos here. Now, the other additional benefit is once you close this walkthrough, it creates a seat back here. So when you're helming, you actually have somewhere to sit. Now, the problem with these single helm vessels, you can't see over the darn thing. You got a giant roadblock directly in the middle of your entire cockpit right here. Getting around these is next to impossible, especially if you're sailing. You're out there, the boat's heeled over, it's bobbing back and forth. Getting around this is a pain in the butt. You don't have any handholds. You got one small handhold directly on top of the helm station. That's 100% not what I meant to do right there. Uh, let's go back here again. Come on, let's load. Ready, set, load. Or don't. Okay, so uh, it's not going to load. All right, we'll just keep on moving. So the canoe, stern, no go. Sugar scoop, walk through transom quite a bit better. Okay, now we got our picture back. Now right here, again. So this makes it quite a bit easier. Your access going to be much, much easier. However, we still have that huge disastrous cockpit area right here. Now, when you're helming, especially for longer passages, you want somewhere comfortable to helm. That means the ability to sit down and still have fantastic visibility. With your single helm vessel, it's just generally not possible. Now, some of the large single helms, they're older boats because they don't even really make single helms anymore. Um, it's just not a thing. So again, here's your one little handhold when you're trying to walk around in heavy seas. That's a one hander. The boat's way heeled over. It's flying port to starboard. Not good. It's horrible. This giant roadblock. You can't get around this stupid thing. You have to kind of scoot around. Hunters are notorious just like this. It's a giant pain in the butt, but we do get some benefits. So it is better than the canoe stern or the flatback stern. However, it's still not stellar. It's kind of a, a disastrous compromise. It's like a bad relationship you don't want to be in, but you're just used to it and you accept it. It's not really what you want in the world of sailing. So this would be your sugar scoop swim platform. Now, back on over to the wonderful world of yachts. We're going to eventually get into a good one. Now, this is going to be another single helm vessel. And on the back of this one, see tiny cockpit, tiny, tiny cockpit. They don't even show you the access on and off of this boat because the owners know it's terrible. They're like, oh, man, let's not show them that. But we're going to show them the bathroom a bunch. Hey, we got some winches. Oh, my gosh. There we go. So, again, this has an even smaller sugar scoop with a walkthrough transom on it. A little bit better than the canoe stern, but not really, not really what we're going for here. So a lot of the single hum vessels that you're going to find, they're all going to look very, very similar, just like that. Some sort of a version. Hunters are notorious for doing those, those uh, single helms with a giant roadblock in the middle. Hunters generally good at your livable space on board, but you compromise a lot. Again, we got no space to go around this helming station. Our one handhold is right here. We're gonna be flailing over to the side in rough seas when we're just trying to get back to take our night watch. Little tiny sugar scoop, better than a canoe stern, but still not the jam that we're after. So let's keep on cruising here. This is a large sugar scoop on this Hunter 326 right there. 
This is kind of a racer hybrid, but again, we got some steps there. Not a walkthrough transom on that one, just steps. Sugar scoop, all that good stuff. We're gonna have to go up a bit in price to kind of see what exactly we're after. Now, this is really what, in my opinion, you wanna go for. We're gonna let that load because it's gonna sit there for the next 200 years trying to load. As you know, Sun Odyssey 389. So here we are, it's actually loaded. The Chino 389. Now this, in my opinion, is what you should always go for when you're looking for a long-term comfortable vessel. We want a dual helm vessel. Now, there's a lot of places to sit here. You could actually sleep right by the helm station, a longer passages. You've got a nice sitting platform directly behind the helm, as well as a large fold down swim platform, which again, makes your access onto and off of the boat, not only at the dock, but as well, as in the water much, much easier. This back part right here, this actually creates one large sitting area right there, which is amazing. You can have multiple people back here. So if you're trying to show somebody how to sail, teach them how to sail, very, very easy here. Now, in addition to your access into and off of the vessel, again, you've got a lot of comfort here when it comes to helming your vessel. Very, very easy. You can sit down, long passages, very easy right here. You can use this as a backrest, get yourself one of those little captain's chairs, toss it right in the corner. You're comfy, 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 no problem. I absolutely love this style vessel. And if you look at the manufacturers today, most people, most boat manufacturers, they're only making these. Gone are the tillers, the single helms, thing like that. It's all becoming dual helm because your ease of use is just much, much easier on these dual helm vessels. Not only can you entertain several people out here, but on those long passages, it's just gonna be a lot more comfortable in turn, making your passages in your sailing future much, much easier in the long run. Nice wide open four decks here. So it's not all cluttered with a bunch of stuff like you'd see on some of your older vessels. A uh, lot of access here. This chart plotter actually swings back and forth. So depending on which side you're healing on, you can just turn the chart nice and easy, lemon breezy, making everything super, super simple. So when it comes to the exterior of your boat, now we've covered the interior livable space, what to look for, how to determine what size is going to be for you. And now we've covered the exterior. We've got our canoe sterns. We've got our flat back sterns. We've got our single helm sugar scoops, and we've got our dual helms. Now, in my opinion, the dual helm, it's the clear, decisive winner. Get yourself a dual helm, ladies and gents. They are coming down a ton in price. And in my opinion, it's really the only boat you should ever buy is a dual helm vessel. I said it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Single helm, canoe stern, flat back, sugar scoop, dual helm. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and I'll check you on the next video. Now, if you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head right on over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com. Go ahead, click on consulting right here in your lower left. It's currently on sale. The full 24-7 full meal deal shebang consulting package is on sale for $9.99, normally $2,000 and is currently on sale for only $9.99. Also, my spreadsheet and my number one best-selling sailing book is available as well. And I also put the one-time consults on sale only $49.99. Now, with your full 24-7 complete consulting package, you do get 24-7 access to me in real time, full lifetime access to my members area. I will walk you through every single step of the sailboat buying process, including survey, sea trial, setting things up, going over spreadsheets, narrowing down the sailboat, what offer you should make. And long after you purchase your vessel, I will still be here available to help right under the 24 seven complete consulting package. Now the one-time consult, that's a one hour consult. Whenever you are free and available right on my members area, you also get access to my members area for the next 30 days as well with a one-time consult. And that's just to go over any boat or any questions you might have in the world of sailing. Maybe you're thinking about getting started. Maybe you've got a boat that you're interested in. Who knows? It's super, super cheap right now at only $49.99 and well worth just the month access to the members area, let alone the consulting as well in addition to that. Now, while you're on my website, you can also check out some of my 
apparel if you want to, if that's your thing, it's up there. But really, the main reason for this is my consulting is on sale. So if you need help getting on the water sooner than later, head on over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com. Sign up for some consulting. Let's get you over to the members area and get you on the water sooner than later.